when reporter of Sharing Vietnam asked the high school students in Vietnam whether they would like to study abroad, many young people have confirmed the determination to experience international education. Young Vietnamese intending to study abroad are all preparing their foreign language skills and openness to integrate with the multicultural environment. Well, I'm planning on to like study abroad for my last two years of high school and then going on to university in other countries, preferably the UK or America. I believe that it's a great opportunity to be able to experience more diversity and since UK is a more developed country, I have a better opportunity of having better education as well. Studying abroad is really important because you learn how to take care for yourself and also the environment will be different. Understanding the aspirations and determination of the youngsters, British government always appreciate and promote traditions of its education corporations with Vietnam. This includes the recent visit of the Prime Minister's trade envoy. Besides his busy schedule with the media and the ministries, he specifically spent time to visit the British International School students, through which develop a clearer understanding of Vietnamese students. Here, he tells stories about his childhood, the turning points in life to achieve his dream job. This is one of many evidence of the efforts to attract and inspire young Vietnamese to step out into the world to experience and to grow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shang Vietnam on VTC10 NetVid. Without further ado, I shall introduce to you the UK Prime Minister Trade Envoy, Mr. Lord Putnam, and he will share with us about the opportunities for Vietnamese students to go study abroad in the UK. Thank you, Mr. Lord Putnam, for joining us. So, uh, first of all, uh, can you share with us about the strengths of the UK education? We've been experimenting recently on um, special courses, particularly in science and technology, and uh, with surprising success. And I think we may have begun to evolve a model that might be adopted in the rest of the world for teaching the, the science technology uh, uh, classes, with the, the social STEM subjects. I think the most interesting thing that's happening in the UK is we're beginning to look slightly differently at what success is. You know, for a long time, the success has been based on the brand of the university. So Oxford and Cambridge, obviously, London School of Economics, the Imperial College, it's been very much a, a, a brand-based success. What we're now beginning to look at is we're looking past the brand at the individual courses. What's a successful course? Who are the best young professors, the best young lecturers? So that if, for example, you decided you wanted to be an engineer, I could confidently say to you, there are two or three, four universities which are first class but they, you may never have heard of any of them. They may be universities that you didn't even know were universities, but in fact the courses in engineering they're offering, or the courses in political science they're offering, are exemplary. So I think we are reaching a point now where we're much more confident about being able to um, recommend a particular course, a particular university for a particular young person. And I don't think that was true. A few years ago, you know, the idea you just sold the brand and the, and the young person had, kind of went, came to the university because it was so famous. We're much more sophisticated than that now. And, we, and I, as a result, I think the offering is in itself much more valuable. So we believe that this is your third time uh, coming to Vietnam as the UK's Prime Minister's trade envoy. So we would like to know um, the purpose of the visit and what is the difference of this visit compared to the previous ones? This one has got, this particular visit has more of an education focus than uh, in the past, which suits me very well because it's an area I'm most comfortable with. It's an area in which I've worked almost exclusively for the last 18 years. Um, so yeah, this has got a real education focus. And I also think that what's happening is we are becoming, in the UK, an exemplar nation. I think what we have to offer, our educational product, our educational offering, is, is now as good or better than anywhere else in the world. And I wouldn't have said that uh, even five years ago. 
what are your activities that you have done in order to push forward um, and promote about UK education in Vietnam? I have a problem with the notion of promote uh, because it sounds like I'm selling something. I don't feel I'm selling something. I think I'm, what I am trying to do is make it clear what's available. I've tried to make it clear what's changing because I think what's changing is important. Uh, I've had good meetings with ministers. Uh, they seem to already understand what the benefits that the UK can offer. It's my job really to draw together the threads of two systems and try to match the, the future needs of Vietnamese students with the um, with the style and flavour and and, uh, and and offering that the UK universities can, can uh, are good at for UK universities to be operating within Vietnam. That's my job. That's what I'm trying to do. But I don't see it as promoting. I see it as introducing. And this means that um, you know the UK is really interested in uh, promoting and attracting more Vietnamese students to come to U UK to study as, as well that they highly appreciate the um, abilities of uh, Vietnamese students. So can you share with us your assessment about the abilities of Vietnamese students to study abroad? Vietnamese students are very, very popular with UK universities because they work so hard. They're very good students. Uh, they're diligent, they know why they're there, uh, and they put in a lot of effort. So with individual vice-chancellors and individual uh, universities, uh, Vietnamese students are extremely popular. Uh, and I'd like to think there's a real effort, a real outreach effort, on the part of the best of the uh, most ambitious of the universities uh, to, re yeah, to reach out and attract Vietnamese students, and also maybe meet them halfway. You know, there are cost differentials and there's issues and there's visa problems. Uh, I think there's a big obligation on the British universities to meet the aspirations of the Vietnamese students at least halfway. As of 2013, there were nearly 6,000 students from Vietnam to study in the UK, over nearly 60,000 Vietnamese studying in overseas institutions. It can be seen that the UK is one interesting choice for Vietnamese youth when deciding learning destinations. UK is known for a long historical education, but always changing and challenging. Every year, UK universities are required and tested for being updated and innovate educational approaches to meet the modern challenges. So how does studying in the UK offer personal experience and career opportunity for you? Sang Anh Quốc thì bạn không chỉ học về học thuật. Theo mình thì cái điều bạn học quan trọng hơn là về cuộc sống của và văn hóa ở Anh. Nó mang lại cho tất cả những du học sinh những trải nghiệm khác nhau. Nhưng mà đối với mình thì những cái trải nghiệm đấy vô cùng là tuyệt vời. Bởi vì sao? Người Anh họ làm việc rất là theo khuôn khổ nên tất cả những du học sinh sẽ phải đi theo cái cái khuôn khổ và cái cách giáo dục của họ. Cái thứ hai đấy là về cái môi trường làm việc thì ngành anh luôn tạo cho du học sinh một cái môi trường làm việc hết sức là mở. Có nghĩa là yêu cầu du học sinh phải sáng tạo trong việc học, không phải là đọc và chép mà đưa ra tất cả những cái hỗ trợ giống như là về thư viện, về tài liệu, về tất cả những hỗ trợ đi theo để làm sao du học sinh um, có thể sử dụng hết được cái khả năng của bản thân. Many students dream of studying abroad, but not everyone can afford it. Talented students can seek out to a program called Chevening Scholarships. Và mình nghĩ điều khác biệt lớn nhất giữa học bổng Chevening và các học bổng khác đó là học bổng Chevening hướng đến những người có khả năng lãnh đạo và có khả năng trở thành lãnh đạo trong tương lai. Trong bài luận của mình, bạn phải thể hiện rõ là là một người lãnh đạo thì bạn phải nhìn thấy trong cái lĩnh vực bạn đang làm đang có những cái vấn đề gì. Và khi, khi có những vấn đề đấy thì bạn tin rằng học ở Anh sẽ giúp bạn giải quyết vấn đề đó như thế nào. Và ngoài ra là thể hiện rất rõ trong bài luận những cái uh, kế hoạch làm việc trong tương lai của mình. When Vietnamese students uh, come to the UK to study, what are the things that they need to prepare in order to um, ready to mingle into the international education system and to spiritually be ready? Two things. I think if they, if a Vietnamese student wants to get the most out of uh, an experience in the UK or the UK university, the language is really important. You can't, you've really got to be quite self-critical about your language skills. 
because it, if you're really on top of the language, you're going to have a much, much better experience. If you're struggling with the language, two things will happen. Number one, you will automatically begin to gravitate towards other Vietnamese students. Why? Because it's kind of easier. You can talk to each other in a restaurant and, 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 and in, in your own language. Uh, that, I think, removes part of the experience. Uh, the other thing is, and we're really trying hard, to get a greater degree of sophistication, particularly among parents, to understand the implications of what what does the young person, the, the student, want to be? What do they want to do? There's been a lot of quite lazy thinking over the last decade about, for example, an MBA, that somehow an MBA is an entryway or doorway to a, you know, a wonderfully successful life. It's not like that. You really need a specialism. You really need to look at the, the, the employment market and you really need to lo look at your own skill base, your own interests. I think that my advice to Vietnamese students that come to the UK, smile a lot and let people know that you are approachable um, because the, there will be this sort of an assumption on the part of a lot of uh, British people that, uh, that you want to be private. People uh, are good at that. I watch people on the tube train in the morning. Very few people speak, but if they're spoken to, they'll be very animated but they won't, they won't assume that you want to be spoken to. A lot of Vietnamese students have won uh, Shivening, the one of the most prestigious scholarship for postgraduate. So can you share with us what are the shared value that those students have? Determination, uh, I think, is a big feature. Uh, ambition, obviously. Um, imagination. I think you need something of an imagination to imagine yourself as a Shivening scholar. And interesting enough, these things go together, because once you can imagine yourself as a Chevening scholar, then you probably will develop the determination, the tenacity to, to get there. Uh, without the imagination, you probably will fail at some hurdle along the way. One of the criteria of uh, Chevening is um, those students have to uh, portray a sense of leadership. Um, and how do you think about the Vietnamese um, scholars in terms of their um, abilities and their expressions of those criterion and um, also their abilities to express it during the, the time that they have studied in the UK. So I can well imagine it, it might be a requirement and it would be a very attractive requirement but I can well imagine at least half the Chevening scholars not really being natural leaders. There will necessarily emerge some who are but I think that to look for linkage between the achieving a, a getting an achieving scholarship and being a natural leader, that's slightly tenuous. I think that's asking for a lot. I mean, obviously, they tend to be people who are quite confident uh, and confident in their ability, and by the time they get an achieving uh, scholarship, they ought to have that um, confidence uh, kind of reaffirmed. Uh, leadership? I think leadership's trickier. I think that people, I don't think that leadership has got a lot to do with academic Ability. What is your evaluations about the Vietnamese students when they have to compete with many other talented scholars who also apply for the same scholarship? My own view, uh, my own observation is an extraordinary level of commitment. That's what I, you know, if I had to say, if you asked me six different countries, ask me to typify what would be a typical student from half a dozen countries, and one of them was Vietnam, I would definitely say in the case of Vietnam, the level of commitment is quite extraordinary. And, and determination. This country, once people are focused, has an almost ex well has an extraordinary ability to deliver its objectives. Thank you so much for all your sharing today, and uh, I hope that you will have a great time here in Vietnam with valuable memories. And that's the end for sharing Vietnam today. Thank you so much for watching us, and I hope that you have some motivations for applying to this prestigious scholarship, Shivening. Any questions and recommendations, please email at sharingvietnam at netvittv.net. Thank you, and see you again.